Hey everyone, today I'm going to be sharing a few tips that will help you become way more efficient and quick at using Scratch, whether that is programming or making art. These tips should help you out. But before we get into the episode, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing. And while you're there, drop a comment down below. I love reading through your comments. But anyway, let's get right into the video. So the first tip I have is say you're just sitting here programming and you have a ton of these inputs. So that is values like this where you can set it to numbers anywhere from these these to these instead of just typing in like 25 now clicking on here and doing whatever numbers you want all you need to do is select the first one and just press tab so when you press tab it's actually going to go to the next input so this makes it to where it's super quick all you need to do is say like 15 tab 13 whatever this number now into a tip that can save you a ton of time and it is basically just hawking all sorts of random stuff you can do it in programming and in the art tab for instance one of them is control Z. That is like the universal in computers of undo. Instead of having to say, oh no, I deleted that by accident and then right clicking and clicking on undo, all you need to do is hold control Z on your keyboard. Because your hand should be resting somewhere around your keyboard, it's a lot quicker just to do that. Go to random position. Wait, I didn't want that. You can just control Z. And then the other one is control shift Z, which is redo instead of clicking redo. So basically you just hold control shift Z and now boom, that's back. And it's the same in the art tab if you make something you're like no i don't want that Control z same thing with Control shift z you can redo everything you undid another one is instead of clicking these plus and minus to zoom in all you need to do is hold Control and you can easily zoom in and out which is what i do a lot i do this a lot if i'm trying to move around because say you have this really long code block instead of having to scroll like this all the way to the bottom all you need to do is do this and boom you're at the bottom and then of course in inside of this scrolling tab instead of using these bars you can just hold your mouse wheel but if you hold shift and do the mouse wheel you can actually move on the x-axis so that way you can easily move around and manipulate what you're doing the next tip is to use custom blocks so what i mean by that are these blocks down here so let me give you an example so here i have a really long code i guess that's okay for one because it works fine there's nothing wrong with it as you can see it functions perfectly but say we wanted to make a clone do the exact same so we do when i started the clone and then we would duplicate all of this programming and if we had multiple clones and we'd want to use the clone ID so this would be the first one then we'd have to duplicate it move all the way down to here and then this is a second clone and it gets really really messy as you can see so what you can do instead is just make a block and name this whatever and then you can put all of that programming in there so this is your code and then you can just do stuff right there then likewise in the when i started a clone you can just do stuff otherwise stuff and as you can see that just cleans it up so much and makes it easy to work with and the other reason is say you wanted to adjust these values so this one's my clone one right instead of having to go oh man instead of repeating 10 times i want it to be 25 times for the clone so then you have to dig through this and go like i think it's this one maybe 25 and then the coding different and if something doesn't work it just gets really messy so instead you could just go into your custom block and add an input name that whatever i'll just name it input and then put that where you want it so this is going to be the one that can change so for the right i want it to do 10 times for this one 25 and this one five times and that will save you so much time and make your code cleaner as well if you want a more in-depth explanation on how to use these custom blocks and what all these different things do then check out my video on how to use custom blocks i'll leave a link down below in the description if you want to check that out another big thing that will save you time is to prototype your games before you try to make art so say i'm going to make a platformer i would name this whatever player right and then you spend all your time making a really elaborate nice looking art and then you go and right and you're starting to program and you go forever if touching whatever you do all your programming and then it ends up not working then you're like you know 
know what, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do a platformer, then you just kind of made art and it's a little bit frustrating because you spent your time to make beautiful art but you didn't end up using it. And it can also help just to get the idea out because instead of spending so much time making art, you can just make a simple box or something to begin like this. Doesn't even have to be pretty and then you can start prototyping your game and getting the mechanics down such as movement, making it feel good, making it's smooth and not buggy and then you can worry about making nice looking art because you already have your gameplay down and that is something that i do with all of my games if you click on my tower defense game and go inside of it you can actually go into the towers and find the temporary art i use so if you just move away all of this stuff as you can see there's actually a turret of just a really simple square that i use and if i go into my trash you can actually see how my my tower defense game started as you could see i just used very simple squares and circles and just simple colors like that to make sure everything worked and then i went ahead and designed some art for it and as you can see i just started slowly but surely making art so this is a very early version of my tower defense game as you can see it's very different from how you see it now there's actually dwarf people and this looks different too i got a little bit sidetracked there but you get the point and the very last tip is to use this edit restore button right here. So you may be thinking, wait, isn't that just an undo button? We delete some programming and do restore. It does nothing. That is what control Z is for. What restore does is it saves the last sprite or costume that's been deleted. And this has saved me so many times. I've had a bunch of costumes like this and I've been scrolling through and trying to see for an animation to make sure everything looks good. And as I'm scrolling, through I accidentally click on the little delete button and I delete one of my costume and it's so frustrating but thankfully scratch saves the last one so right here it says restore costume if I click restore costume boom it comes back with my purple line man I missed it so much and it's the same for sprite as you can see so here's some coding here's a costume Here's another costume and we accidentally delete it. You just do file, restore sprite, coding's back, costumes are back. That can save you so much time and frustration of having to recode and redesign costumes. Thank you all so much for watching my random tips on making it you more efficient on Scratch. I hope this video helped you out. If you did enjoy, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing. It'll really mean a lot to me. Anyway, this has been Owen and I am out.